very different from what they are supposed to do. They are crowded in shops, buying gifts, buying clothes, buying materialistic things, accumulating a lot. I don't accuse of people buying this, but the focus. They focus on things except for the birth of Jesus. They focus on everything. The amount of holiday spending in U.S., in 2014 was 721 billion dollars on an average a family spends 700 dollars for gifts alone and they spend somewhere around like 300 dollars for food alone there is nothing wrong in giving gifts providing foods, but where is our focus? What is, this, uh, what is the focus upon? The total theme, the total focus during this time is about the birth of Jesus. <laughs> Our most wonderful and gracious God. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful time you have given us to focus more upon you, Lord. We thank you for your presence with us. You speak, Lord, we hear. Sing this message deep in our hearts and minds so that we will be able to understand and comprehend the message, Lord. Let our character conversation always reflect you, Lord. Be with us throughout this time. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. 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 This is almost uh, end of the Advent season. And it's barely like uh, three to four days for Christmas. It's all festive modes. Uh, people traveling to meet their dear and loved ones. People flock to different places. When it comes to Christmas, what is that you have in your mind? What memories do you have during this Christmas time? Meeting people, going to church, listening to Christmas songs, having parties, inviting friends. But when I think of Christmas, I always have some powerful memories in my heart. Some people, they don't reflect on any of these things, whatever I said. But these people, they always focus on their difficulties difficulties what they have encountered in the past year. The relationships they have lost, the dear and the near ones they have lost to those periods. And probably some they reflect upon their job losses. But the focus for us during this Christmas time, we should think more on the blessings that God has given us. 
if you look closer into families you would see the children running around with more joy and happiness during christmas times when they meet their friends when they meet their cousins there is more happiness in them above all just before the day of christmas they would be eagerly awaiting for their christmas gifts they would be hurriedly going around opening up the gifts they really wanted to know what is inside the box what is inside the gift am i getting the thing that i was really wanting to have it or is it something else but it would be so unusual for a child to receive the gift and not opening it we have never ever seen any kid or any other person receiving a gift but never open it and see what is inside it is so unfortunate that many of christian believers they do have the greatest gift that has been ever given but they overlook it and they don't really have the chance to open it and see what is inside that gift christians and believers they treat the gift of salvation such like that they accept it but they never bother to explore the riches that is available to them if you look into second corinthians chapter 9 verse 15 paul says thanks be to god for his indescribable gift this verse has nothing to do with the birth of jesus or jesus being offered as a gift but he ends this chapter with this one thanks be to god for his indescribable gift which he refers to jesus christ though the most precious gift for god so loved the world that he gave his one only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but will have everlasting life whoever believes in him shall not perish but will have everlasting life jesus came to this earth in human flesh but he st- still remained divine on that first christmas the angels announced the savior was born that's what we read in um luke chapter 2 2 verse 11 today in the town of david a savior has been born to you he is the messiah the lord Jesus Christ came to rescue us from the eternal separation from God. He came he came to live a perfect life. And he died on the cross for our place. Now when we all place the trust in Jesus Christ we receive that mercy instead of the punishment there's a more amazing gift as i told you the benefits of salvation is the personal relationship to god it's because of christ's sacrifice we are accepted 
we have that acceptance and we have the instant access to the father so the eternal life is the most pre- precious possession anyone can receive it's because of his love it's because of his love our heavenly father offered this gift to everyone no one has debarred from here he gave this gift to everyone who will accept his son through faith so this gift is so precious to us whatever gifts we receive materialistically will not last long forever apart from Jesus Christ who is the precious gift so during this christmas time let's unwrap and see what is inside first thing i want to say is i want to encourage you to explore the gift of salvation during this christmas time not only during this christmas time but throughout the coming days and into the new year as you discover the rich of this treasure let this bring more praise and gratitude to the god who has provided this gift the reason why i say is if you turn to romans chapter 6:23 it says the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus our lord it's the gift of god and the gift of god is eternal life in christ Jesus Christ is God's greatest gift to us. The gift of God's grace, truth, hope and love. If you read John 14:6, we all know this verse. When Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth and the life." we all know that christmas is about giving but the problem with some of us is we deceive ourselves by failing to understand the gift that god has given us is so phenomenal so phenomenal no other gift stands equal to that most of us we try to overlook it we always focus on the difficulties we always focus on the things that we don't have that is the reason for some of the people they always focus on their loneliness their financial pressures their unaccomplished dreams their unmet expectations the spirits are so crumbled they keep their eyes focused on all these things rather than by focusing on the one who gave us all the blessings they focus on the pain and the disappointments when i was preparing this message there was one news article i came across it's here in, in this country they talk about the holiday blues it's nothing but a depression depression during holiday season they call it as the holiday season not the christmas season they call it as it's a 
holiday season and they call it as the holiday blues. A majority of American people, they experience depression during this Christmas season. They don't have that joy in them. They don't have the peace in them. They don't express their loving kindness to other people, but they are in a situation of depression. It is so alarming to see 65% of antidepressant drugs are sold in the U.S. Because of this depression, this is an 65 percentage is an alarming rate. That's the amount of increase in antidepressant drugs that are being sold here in the U.S. That's the status of these people at times. Everybody has gone through stress, burdens, emotions. They always try to overwhelm us. That's the way the devil works in us. He steals our happiness during this Christmas season. If you look into people, that the way they celebrate Christmas is totally different from what they are supposed to do. They are crowded in shops, buying gifts, buying clothes, buying materialistic things, accumulating a lot. I don't accuse of people buying this, but the focus. They focus on things except for the birth of Jesus. They focus on everything. The amount of holiday spending in U.S. in 2014 was $721 billion. On an average, a family spends $700 for gifts alone. And they spend somewhere around like $300 for food alone. There is nothing wrong in giving gifts, providing foods, but where is our focus? What is, this, uh, what is the focus upon? The total theme, the total focus during this time is about the birth of Jesus. Why was this baby born? Why did God give this baby? What is the purpose? Why do you celebrate this birth of this baby? The focus is totally gone out of control. The biggest irony is the end of all these crowds partying We miss that in the church. The churches are empty. The shops are crowded. The focus is on something else. Not on the gift that was given to us. So, I want to encourage whoever is listening right now and will be listening by recalling what God has provided for us on that wonderful night thousands of years ago when this baby was born he dwelt among us and he changed the history of the whole human 
race. We need to keep our focus on him and to truly enjoy the blessings of Christmas. If we truly understand the gift that was given to us, we will have the hope we need to sustain us during all circumstances of our life, all the ups and the downs, good times, bad times. That's the reason he told, I am the way, the truth, and life. Before we end, we look into the aspect of the gift. Three important things I want to mention here. How wonderful this gift is and why need to meditate upon that. If we meditate on that, we can unlock the joy God offers to us during this Christmas time. Not only during this Christmas time, but throughout the years and the days to come. The first thing is, we have to realize this gift was from the Father. Recall again the verse, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son. So God gave this gift. We have to have this focus that this gift of Christ, in him, we find salvation. That gift is from the Father. That we receive that gift from him who is the creator and the sustainer of all things. Whatever gifts we have received in the past or in the present is all immaterial. We know that some of the gifts what we have received in the past are so precious to us. Materialistically, I'm talking. The gifts that we have received from our loved ones, from moms, from dads, from uncles, from aunts. Those are all like materialistic things. But the gift, the gift of the Father, Jesus Christ, stands above all. He is the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. There is no greater wonderful gift apart from this. We receive him and he, we receive the free gift of salvation. If you, if you read into Psalms, most of the Psalms written by David, he talks about the salvation. He is my rock. He is my salvation. He is my life. If you if you look into um, Psalm 62, he writes more about this salvation. He is my salvation. He is my rock. He is the salvation indeed. He is acceptable by everybody, and that salvation is always priceless and everlasting. If you look into John chapter 10, in verse 28, Jesus says, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Never perish. The second aspect here is, our gift was motivated by God's unconditional love for us. Unconditional love for us. 
God demonstrated his love towards us while we were at sinners. Christ died for us. That's what we read in Romans 5, 8. It's that unconditional love of God. God doesn't want you and me to remain unforgiven in our transgressions. If we have that transgressions, we would be eternally separated from him. But because of his love, he sent down his son as a living sacrifice for our iniquities. If you look into Isaiah 59, 2, that's what it says. He came down and he became a sacrifice for our iniquities. That's the reason I emphasize celebrate the baby in the manger. It's not our part parties. It's not about the presents. It's not about the pageants. Or not even about people. It's the baby in the manger. He humbled himself when he came down here. He is the great I am, the God of all creation, who gave his one and only son because he loves us. He understands us. He is always thinking about our, us, which we always forget. Whenever there is a distress comes, when there is a trouble that comes, we immediately doubt God. Is it wise enough to do that? He always desires to give us the best. He knows what to give, when to give, how to give. Let us focus on that. And the third most important, our gift is priceless because of whom we have been given. Our gift is priceless because of whom we have been given. The Father has given us no less than the one far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is being named. That's what we read in Ephesians 1.21. He gave his one and only son. He did not spare his own son. But he delivered him all oh, for all of us. We read the same in Romans 8.32. Therefore, I would like to say, keep your mind on the Savior during Christmas time. Focus on him. I don't deny by saying like you're not supposed to meet people, give or receive gifts. No. But the main focus here is Jesus Christ, the Savior who came down for us. We accept him. We accept him and we get the free gift of eternal life, salvation. If we get that, are we exploring it? Are we having a deep relationship with God? Are we trusting him in all walks of life? Do we experience 
His grace, His love. He is called Emmanuel, God with us. He is indwelling within us when we accept Him, who prompts us to do the right thing. And He gives us the perseverance when we walk through tough times. And He gives us the peace when there is more difficulties. The reason we call Him Prince of Peace. And whenever we are in dark times, He is the light. He is the light of the world. And he is always our high priest. The king of kings and the lord of lords. The lamb who took away the sin of this world. He is our redeemer. Our deliverer. And our savior. The, the time we need to focus on him, especially during this Christmas time. Let us cherish on him, focus on him, praise him. As I told you, like he's the Prince of Peace, the light that guides us, and our great priest, the Lord of Lord. Before I end, this is the question I want to pose. This Christmas time, will you remember and think about his awesome gift for you? Or do we want to focus on the disappointments and the trials? And take away the joy of the Christmas. It's a choice. Either to focus on the eternal or the other way around. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time you gave us. Thank you for the wonderful lines you gave us, wonderful messages we have heard. And this time, this message, Lord, Sink this message deep in our hearts. Thank you for your wonderful son, Lord. The son you gave us. The wonderful counselor. You have given us to counsel us in every walk of life. The mighty Lord. Who is omnipotent. Omniscient. All-knowing ever-present, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace you have given us, Lord. Help us to focus on the things that we need to focus on at this time and also during the rest of the years, Lord. You bring us all the blessings that we need and help us to do the things that, Lord, you prefer, not on things that will not bring any glory to you, Lord. Be with us. Be with every one of the family, Lord. Bless our family, our children, and the people who are listening to this message. Let every knee bow down Every mouth confess, Lord. Let them accept you as the Lord, the Savior, who came down for us. Humbled, Lord, in the manger. Yielded to the cross. Shed the blood for us, Lord. To wipe away all the sins. And took us near you, Lord for this wonderful relationship. The instant call, Lord, the Holy Spirit you have given us. Be with us. Bless us. 
Let us always do things that will glorify you, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.